Now, we start a new subsection in respiratory physiology, alveolar blood gas exchange. And first, let's take a look at gases partial pressures because they are really and really important. We will see at the partial pressure of gases in ambient air, in inspired air, and in alveoli. It is very important to note that ambient air has an approximate composition of 79% of nitrogen and 21% oxygen. The total pressure of this mixture at sea level averages 760 millimeters of mercury. By convention, partial pressure of a gas is expressed in terms of its dry gas concentration. Gas concentrations may be expressed as fractional concentrations in an inspired gas mixture. In our atmosphere, the fraction of nitrogen is 0.79 and fraction of oxygen is 0.21. According to Dalton's law, the total pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of gases in a mixture, meaning P total total pressure equals PA plus PB plus PC, so on and so forth. In order to determine the partial pressure of any gas in ambient dry air, we use this formula which says the pressure of gas equals fraction of that gas times atmospheric pressure. For example, the PO2 in ambient air is equal to the fraction of oxygen, which is 0.21, times atmospheric pressure, which is 760 millimeters of mercury, and this gives us 160 millimeters of mercury. This is the PO2 in ambient air. The PN2 in ambient air is equal to 0.79 times 760 millimeters of mercury. And this gives us 600 millimeters of mercury. And this is PN2 in ambient air. After that, this air is inspired and first reaches the conducting zone, not alveoli, the respiratory zone. Let us talk about the partial pressure of gases in, uh, in inspired air. First, let me draw here a part of bronchial. Inspired air is defined as air that has been inhaled, warmed to 37 degrees Celsius and completely humidified but has not yet engaged in gas exchange. It is the fresh air in an atomic dead space that is about to enter the respiratory zone, the alveoli. It is very important to note that in inspired air, the partial pressure of oxygen and nitrogen drops. PO2 drops down to 150, which originally was 160 millimeters of mercury, and PN2 decreases to 563. This happens because the atmospheric air in conducting zone will be humidifying and become saturated with water vapor. As a consequence, the partial pressure of air gases reduce. At 37 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 47 millimeters of mercury and must be accounted for when determining the gas composition of inspired air using this formula. P inspired gas equals the fraction of that gas times atmospheric pressure minus the vapor pressure of water. For example, the PO2 of inspired air is equal to 0.21 times uh, 760 minus 47, and this gives us 150 millimeters of mercury. If you calculate PN2 in inspired air, you will get 560 3 millimeters of mercury. Next, the air will reach the respiratory zone. Let us see at partial pressure of gases in alveoli. First, I will draw here alveoli and a vessel. It is very important to note that the composition of inspired air is constant throughout the conducting zone of the lung where no gas exchange occurs. As the air reaches the respiratory zone, alveoli, the partial pressures of gases change. The partial pressure of oxygen drops down to 100 millimeters of mercury. 
This happens because within the respiratory zone, oxygen diffuses from alveolar air to blood while carbon dioxide diffuses from blood to alveolar air, resulting in change in alveolar gas composition. The partial pressure of oxygen drops to 100 millimeters of mercury and CO2 partial pressure is 40 millimeters of mercury. The relationship between partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in alveolar air is described by the important alveolar gas equation. P alveolar O2 equals P inspired O2 minus P alveolar CO2 divided by R, where PaO2 and PiO2 are the partial pressures of oxygen in alveolar air and inspired air respectively. PaCO2 is partial pressure of carbon dioxide in alveolar air and R is the respiratory quotient which usually has a value of 0.8. Let us determine the alveolar PO2 using our equation. PaO2 equals 150 millimeters of mercury minus 40 millimeters of mercury divided by 0.8 and this gives us 100 millimeters of mercury. It is very important to know in a pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood the PO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury and PCO2 is 47. When its blood reaches the respiratory zone, oxygen diffuses from alveolar air to blood while carbon dioxide diffuses from blood to alveolar air. As a consequence, the partial pressures between alveolar gases and blood gases equalize. The partial pressure of blood oxygen and alveolar oxygen becomes 100 millimeters of mercury and PCO2 in alveolar compartment and pulmonary blood will become 40 millimeters of mercury. The end capillary has the same gas composition as alveolar air. It is extremely important to know that in systemic arteries, we have a tiny drop in PO2. The PO2 in systemic arteries drops to 95 millimeters of mercury, but PCO2 remains 40. So what is the reason of falling PO2 in a systemic artery? This brings us to physiological pulmonary shunt. It is very important to know that in addition of receiving blood via pulmonary arteries for the gas exchange, the lungs have their own blood supplying which provide lung tissue with nutrition and oxygenated blood. These arteries are called bronchial arteries that arise from the thoracic aorta. Of course, I'm not showing the exact place of arising. These arteries supply blood to the bronchi and connective tissue of the lungs, then return mainly via the pulmonary veins to the heart. The PO2 in a pulmonary vein is 100 millimeters of mercury, whereas in a bronchial vein, which is coming after supplying lung with oxygen, the PO2 is 40. This mixed blood then flows to the heart and will be pumped to the aorta. This is why the PO2 in a systemic artery is slightly lower than the alveolar PO2. Due to this mixture, the PO2 may drop down to 95 millimeters of mercury. It is very important to know that this difference between alveolar PO2 and systemic arterial PO2 is referred as AA gradient. The alveolar arterial gradient. A normal alveolar arterial gradient for a young adult non-smoker breathing air is between 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury. Normally, the alveolar arterial gradient increases with age. An abnormally increased alveolar arterial gradient suggests a defect in diffusion, VQ mismatch, or right-to-left shunt. All these conditions cause hypoxemia.